You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and this is episode number 458. Thanks guys for hanging out with us. As always, we're very appreciative. Glad you're with us. Hope you're doing great. And as always, thank you to everyone who listens. I know you already said that, Rob, but also thank you to our sponsor, yeah. Videoblocks.com. In case you haven't been around recently, Videoblocks.com also has Audioblocks.com. Both sites are a subscription-based service to get either B-roll footage, segue shots, cutaways, transitions, whatever. But if you also need copyright-free audio, you can get that from Audioblocks.com, and they've got a library of thousands and thousands of songs. You may love it. Well, if you're a listener of Astro and You, which clearly are because you're listening to this this right now. <laughs> if you go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone 2016, again, that's videoblocks.com forward slash drone 2016, you can get both audio blocks and video blocks for a hundred bucks off. So that's a year of unlimited downloads for $150 for all copyright free music and B roll and segues and transitions and motion graphics and all that stuff. So I think that's a pretty sweet deal. It's Check a huge it out. Deal. Absolutely. So you definitely got to be a little creative, you know, but I think that uh, y there's so much there to choose from. So Yeah, and more and more is being put up there every single day. It's so true. So. so true. Anyway, well, let's get right into today's question. Don't forget, if you're trying to get your commercial drone license, the part 107, you can get that license with DroneU. Just go to DroneUlive.com. Gentlemen, this is Jeffrey from Nashville, Tennessee, home of the Grand Ole Opry. Got a question for you. Got a brand new DJI Phantom 4. Um, got my 107 already. Got four batteries. Got your polar filters. Um, other than doing real estate, I'm trying to figure out what other applications I can use my Phantom 4 um, to do. Uh, could really use your feedback. Um, I was asking specifically more about like cell phone tower inspections, things like that. Um, and if it does not have the capabilities to do that, um, what does it have the capabilities to do, like uh, like search and rescue missions, FLIR, things like that. Thank you for all you do. Have a good one. Bye. Very cool, Jeffrey. Thank you for the question, and uh, thank you for getting your 107. That's awesome that you've got that done. Definitely. Flying legally, doing Definitely. it the right way. We certainly appreciate that here, Drone You. Totally. Um, now let's talk a little bit about just generally speaking videography jobs that you can do. Remember, the Phantom 4 is going to limit you based on a couple things. Number one, your limitations, your operating limitations, the type of wind you can handle. So that's going to affect how many days out of the year you can really fly. So if you've got a windy day, say 15, really 15 miles an hour is when mm -hmm. you stop getting nice, smooth, buttery footage with the P4. Uh, any day that you have more than a 15 mile an hour wind, you can pretty much bet your butt that you're not going to get the best quality to provide your clients mm -hmm. with the best product. Now, remember, you're only as good as your last video. So when you put out crappy videos with footage that was taken in really windy conditions. It may make your client happy, but it may limit your opportunity for future clients if they see that footage. So we really don't want to, uh, we don't really want to take it down a level on the mm -hmm. quality just to be able to fly. Don't recommend that. Yeah. Cause you're not going to be able to go back later and say, yeah, but it was windy. That's just yeah. not going to compute. Because then a real drone firm is going to come around and be like, I've got an Inspire One, I've got a M600, you know, which by the way, I'd never buy an M600, um, but uh, an Inspire One even, right? Up mm -hmm. to 25 mile an hour wind. So right. going to have a lot more flexibility. That being said, there are still a lot of jobs that you can do with a Phantom 4. It's got great glass. It's got a great 4K footage that comes out of it. And you can even shoot slow-mo. The issue is, is again, wind and mm -hmm. quality. Uh, so what can you do in videography? Well, it's great for action sports, but again, if you're doing high-end action sports, like not your local motocross event or not your local BMX event or not your local skateboarding event or anything like that, even even if you're doing videos for like low-level 
Oh, I'm trying to find a good example here. Even if you're doing skate videos for like your local shops, right? You can mm-hmm. use a Phantom 4 for that if you're doing advertising and marketing video for action sports shops or surf shops or anything like that. Sure. The Phantom still is going to cover it. You're still going to get great yeah. footage, still going to look good. It's We've fine. had members that are talking about doing work for dealerships. I would think the Phantom could do a great job for the dealership. Oh, speaking of dealerships, I finally oh. did the Freedom Journal and I called all the car dealerships in town. Did you? And I got like five phone calls back like, oh, we've heard of you. Like, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, Jeffrey and everybody else. Just got to put in the work. Yeah. And now I'm going to use my Inspire One Z3 for that because this particular client has a great setup and I can do some really cool vertigo shots and whatnot. But um, Nice. You know, again, Phantom 4, you can really do a whole lot with. Uh, Let's move out of videography. Yes, you can do photography. Don't do drone photography like everyone else and just take a picture and do a little saturation bump and call it a day. Uh, You really should follow the rules of photography. You should also, which are ambiguous, but you should also, you know, be utilizing AEB. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to check out Vic Moss's photography class. It'll be up soon. Don't know when. But that's by far the best class I've seen on the internet, and I'm just so happy Vic did it because it's just amazing content. Um, Anyway, going into that, uh, the Phantom 4 is actually killer for photos. It's even better, in my opinion, than the Inspire 1 with the X3. Mm -hmm. So you can do even like hotel uh, advertising, tourism advertising. In fact, I got a phone call from local tourism as well. So just trying to gauge all these different things that are coming at me right now because it's astronomical <laughs> all the things that are going on here at drone U. so if you're in albuquerque we might have some work for you yeah seriously <laughs> um anyway and then i'm not giving work to anyone who's not licensed so you can i've dude so many people that's a no-brainer you don't even need to say that yeah. anyway okay so moving on uh, construction site management and construction site progress is another great thing you can do with the phantom four you can do hyperlapses of construction sites. That's a great upsell for construction mm. progress photos. Is and doing the P4 hyper- is good for that. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, be great. A little bit more work on the hyperlapse, but you can also charge 10x, 15x. So, so what if you've got a group of investors and they want to see kind of what's going on live? Can you live stream to them from the P4? Yeah, you totally can live stream from the P4. It's a great platform to do it. The P3 wasn't really the best, but P4 is incredible for live streaming. Um, just again, you know, you're going to be limited because you can't really zoom. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be limited in your flying capability on what you can live stream and sure. how good the quality is there. But right. yeah, totally. Um, I'm trying to think even even some low level. If you live in a small town, you're working with a small news team. A lot of people mm-hmm. use Phantom 4s just for that, believe it or not. So Yeah, because like you said, the glass is good. Yeah. I mean, you totally. get some really great images and video out of it. Totally. It's 20. nothing like the X5, but, you know, it's definitely very good. Yeah, the X5, I mean, you're talking about going from two grand to, what, 5500 by the time you got the whole setup? You can actually get now, um, I think Multicopter Warehouse and Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems both have this Inspire One Pro with batteries and a case and iPad and all this for like 4500 bucks. Wow, it's not so bad. With X5. Very nice. Yeah, very cool. Hmm. All so right. how can you tell that the Inspire 2 is coming in soon? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've been saying that for a little while, but it probably is. Uh, November 15th. Oh, we already know. Yeah. Awesome. So remember what happens when you take people drinking, they spill the beans. (laughs) That's my strategy. (laughs) So for any of those clients that you want, apparently that's the way to go about it. (laughs) Take them to the local tavern. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, Johnny, would you like a beer today? Let's hit the pub. So there are other kinds of inspections. He mentioned specifically cell towers. That would be doable, right? Definitely doable. Um, that's another thing where you're either creating an ortho mosaic map where you're mapping the tower so they mm-hmm. can actually go in and zoom in and see you know, what's actually on the tower themselves, or you're just taking pictures. Um, and here's a, another great thing. And if cell phone tower companies were smart, they would listen to what I'm about to say. And I think they're smart. I think they are too. Okay, so... We're going to imagine all the cell phone tower inspection companies, right? They've got a guy on a boom truck, boom truck, goes out to the cell tower. What if it was just a regular truck and it was just an F-150? A, an F-150. Sweet. Hey, I heard you bought me one. Thanks, by the way. Yeah. Um, and it was just a guy in a truck and the guy flies the drone instead of a guy getting into a boom truck to go inspect it himself because they always have to have a two-man crew because of that yeah so now you got a guy flying a drone you got a guy being the visual observer and they're having a whole lot more fun they're having a lot more fun it's 
significantly safer, significantly cheaper, significantly cheaper on many levels. The truck in and of itself. That's I mean, at least buy a nineteen eighty five F one fifty. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you go from a forty thousand dollars savings or an eighty thousand dollars savings, depending on how right. old of your replacement truck is. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. But so. yeah, completely different ball game, and you can do inspections more regularly because it's going to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that'd be a no-brainer. I think definitely a no-brainer. So we've talked about videography, photography. We've talked about real estate, commercial real estate, if we didn't mention commercial real estate. We didn't, but that's a great way to go. Hotel industry, hotel marketing, tourism marketing, companies that do tours and all that. that that's a great you know, place to reach out to. Developers. Just go to, go to your local hotel and just grab those stupid little paper things and start calling those people. That's a good idea. Why not do that? Yeah. And you've got people that are developing entire, like out here, um, and I know there's one in, I think it's Centennial in Colorado. I mean, they're developing these huge communities that are basically little cities. If you can get a hold of those people, those developers, that would be a great way to go as far as progress Photos and videos, that would be a lot of fun, actually. Totally, totally. Could really get into that. Fun. And I think they, they would see the value in that. Definitely. Um, you could do weddings, but I don't recommend it. Um, you could do, let's see, uh, another big one right now is utilizing uh, companies to do roof inspections. So also, if you're an insurance adjuster or you want to be an insurance adjuster, you're only making, you know, like, I think it's 50 bucks an hour, but you're you're expected to, you know what? I think drone pilots actually make a little bit more. I think it's like a hundred and 150 an hour, um, for adjusters to go out and do adjusting with drones. That's not bad. No, it's I mean, not. it's not 5,000 a day, but that's not bad. Yeah. I like the whole 5,000 a day because you got a day of travel, 5,000 a day, a day of travel. Um, and then it's kind of like, you know, it gives me the freedom to do drone U training. Like right. that's why I like those jobs because I can make a, a month's income <laughs> I think in a everybody day. would like those jobs. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Whatever your reasons are, I'm sure you would like those jobs. <laughs> the reasons have changed through the progress of the company, I guess you could say. Yeah. But, um, you know, so we're, we've talked about, you know, tours, like if you live on the coast, there's just so much that you could do. Um, I'm trying to think here. Uh, Gosh, be creative. Think outside the box. I mean, I, I don't know. I think of like, for whatever reason, you're going to be going to Florida soon. The uh, Is it the Everglades? Mm -hmm. You could you could create your own video flying the Everglades. I guess you have to keep it in sight though, right? You have to keep yeah. the line of sight. So that, that might not work. Let's switch gears a little bit. He Where asked, are you going with the Everglades? I was going with like creating a really cool, almost like a virtual tour of the Everglades with your drone, which I think so would be awesome. That's actually a big point. There's people that are working with big major studios on 360 tour videos yeah. like that. So yeah, no, I think that's great. I was thinking about, you know, what do you come to New Mexico and do? And a lot of people, you know, do like the whole home on the range thing where they like do a cattle drive. And if you were to reach out to lodges, hunting lodges, um, vacation lodges, cattle drives, mm -hmm. even places that do horseback riding rides, all of those people, potential clients. And by the way, if you're in Canada, these places are all over the oh, place. Man. I mean, you could get rich just on doing those. Yeah. Actually, what comes to mind around here, and I'm, you know, they're all over the country, are ski areas. Because I think a drone footage would be a great way to highlight different runs. As long as you don't live in Colorado, I think it's a great idea. Why? <laughs> because Colorado is banned at practically every uh, area that there is, even though it's really funny because you could be right next to Telluride and Telluride has banned drones, but you could own a property like next to it, take off and land from your property and they can't say a word about it. Right. Well, anyways, those are ideas, whether you can do it or not, you'd have to find out, but that'd be actually a good use of the P4, I think. I think another really huge point to hit here too is, I mean, you're seeing us kind of go through this progression of what could be done. We're just sitting here throwing out ideas. And my ideas are more focused on things that I truly enjoy doing myself on my own time, like wake surfing and mm -hmm. I like boating and I like being outdoors. So, you know, most of my shoots are focused around that because that's what I like to do. So I think as a drone pilot, you really need to sit there and ask yourself, what is cool to me? What is passionate that's going to make me want to try to do better and better and better things and be more creative and add to my skill set all the time? Because if you love to golf, then... Why not go after, you know, golf courses? And you just made me think of boats. That would be awesome. I mean, because if you live in Florida, say you live in Miami or wherever, Tampa, and they're selling million dollar boats, you get them out on the water and create a video of those. I mean, it's like selling real estate. 
Actually, boating real estate is a big deal on the coast. Yeah. So yeah, you just brought up a huge point. I will say though that most of the markets in boating are pretty saturated right now. So that's all right. Be better. True. But I saturate that market. <laughs> you, you're one person, whatever. You no, know, true. And there's so many boating companies. There's, and I, but I know the drone guys were like all oh, the companies. So it's just funny. Um, but there's I a lot of competition. It. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, he also mentioned search and rescue. A P4 probably isn't going to work for that. Not on any significant level. Well, you know, let's be honest. It, could it work for search and rescue? Yes. Again, severely limiting. It's not the best tool you want to use for search and rescue. Right. We just did the search and rescue training in Rancho Cucamonga. And in fact, here's a great example, right? Uh, they're looking for people that constantly get trapped in this canyon full of water. Mm -hmm. And I'm flying out and I'm like zoomed in 80 millimeters with all the digital zoom I can use. And I'm live streaming it to like the governor of California and the city manager of Rancho Cucamonga <laughs> and like all these people. And, you know, I got a phone call and Buzz is like, how far up, you know, how far above the water are you right now, Paul? And Buzz is like, I think he's like 20 or 30 feet above the water and like 200 feet below us. And I said, no, Buzz, I'm 100 feet above us looking down 400 feet into the canyon. The power and of Zoom. Huh? It's the power of Zoom. And he's like, wow, really? And he goes, can you show everyone? So I zoom all the way out and you <laughs> can't even watching. see the water. Awesome. Yeah, you can't even see the water. And um, they're just like, wow, okay, so we definitely need that camera. And if yeah. you had a P4, you would try to like, you know, go down and fly down in there. And the problem is with those canyon winds, the P4 wouldn't be able to get close enough to give a, a good enough image to transmit and then you'd be so far down into the canyon you probably wouldn't be able to live stream it back to true. the oc so yeah true so it would be limited it is possible in a pinch if that's all you've got you've got somebody lost maybe you go look if it's and try all to help. you've got go for it it's yeah. definitely not the best but tool. you're not going to be able to fly a FLIR. No. Any kind of thermal, no. infrared, anything. Remember, the Phantom 4, like all of that, it is made to carry the payload that's on it. It's not made to carry anything else. Right. Sure, you can add a loom cube or two to it, but you're you know decreasing your flight time by anywhere from 25 to 45%. Wow. So again, you're not going to fly a FLIR. It's just not going to work. The bottom line is there are a lot of different things that you could do with a P4. Totally. I mean, it's pretty cool, actually. Just use your imagination, talk to people. Like Paul said, figure out what you want to do and make it happen. Yeah, li literally focus on it. Because I'm sitting here thinking like, gosh, we could just go through this over and over again. Name a business. Just name a business. Name a business. Name a business. Um, Barty Ranch. What? <laughs> Did you say Farty Ranch? No, no, I did not say. I said the Bar D Ranch. Okay, well, Bar it's a really cool place in Colorado. Okay, so the Bar D Ranch could use drones for multiple reasons: advertising their property, showcasing if they sell their animals for slaughter or whatever, they could showcase what they have. If they're wanting to show, well, he can't fly a FLIR, so never mind on the last one. Um, yeah, I think that's name another business. One in town. Name a business in town. Zymes Ford. No, that's not in town. What? That's in Farmington. Okay, not in Farmington. Not in Farmington. Big city. All right. Uh, does Carl Malone Toyota still here? Okay. I hate that guy, but yes. <laughs> Why? Um, <laughs> just because, oh, it was a long story. <laughs> it was right before I bought the Escape, actually. I was going to buy an Xterra from them and just had the worst service ever. Oh, that's but, too bad. Um, I'm so happy I bought from CarMax. Anyway, um, this is not an endorsement for CarMax. Uh, anyway. It just became one. Well, even if CarMax <laughs> needed footage, that would be easy. That's a commercial right there. If a bank needed footage and they wanted to get a great shot of the city right there, um, let's talk about um, a bakery. They could do an advertising video that would be funny if they were dropping bagels or something to their customers, right? That's, so wait, that is a really great point because you've got to be creative because who would think of a bakery and how are you going to use a drone for a bakery? But it's, I mean, if you're going to do that, you could just about use it for anything. And it's funny, when I was first hired by the police, it wasn't because they wanted to use the drone to find people or spy on people or anything like that. They wanted to use it for a recruiting video. Hmm. And this was like, this was years and years and years ago. But I mean, literally they wanted it for recruiting videos. So I mean, even the police, you know, thinking about it, you talk about outside the box creativity. You know, one thing I learned 
in Anaheim is that California will not let the police have drones because of public perception. Right. Simply that. Yep. That if they need a drone, they call the fire department. And that was like mind boggling to me, like that public perception is so skewed, but also that the government is so PC that it really hurts us. Yeah, at least they will be okay with the fire department using them. But yeah, that is a little bit odd. It, it, perception is what it is. I've... Perception is reality. Yep. Right? Yeah. So let's talk about a nightclub. You think they could use drone footage of a city if they were doing, let's say, like an advertising video, they wanted a nice nighttime time lapse of the city, like all the traffic going in and out of the Time bar. lapse is exactly what came to mind when you said nightclub. Okay, so that so could be really cool. Let's name another business. Let's just keep going because I want to give people like the idea that no matter the industry, there is a use for drones. It's you figuring out what the use is, what the value is, what problem do you solve, right? You just know what like comes to business. mind this time of year is uh, some of the um, pumpkin patches. I know like mm -hmm. every community in the country has a pumpkin patch. Totally true. And there are all kinds of things you could do with a drone for that. Totally true. Also, if you're a kid and you want to be really creative and you want to blow leaves off of people's yards because, <laughs> well, you just need a few extra dollars, hey, Inspire One makes a killer leaf blower. That's, That's all right. I got to say. <laughs> so you talk about being creative. You know, and just think, you blow them into the next neighbor's yard and then they pay you too. <laughs> yeah. And we just keep going down the line. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what you call recurring revenue. Yeah. Well, don't Not in really, most but... cities, don't you push the leaves out to the street and then the street picks it up? Really? At least in Virginia, it's like that. Maybe not out here. We live in the desert. You know, like right. leaf picker uppers <laughs> in Virginia? Yeah, there's a whole wow. service. No, I don't think we have that here in the Southwest. So, not that I've seen. I'd think, love to see them out there. Gosh, there's just so many uses. Okay, let's talk about the forest, right? Vegetation <clears throat> growth index mm -hmm. mapping. How much did the, the forest grow? What kind of plants are there? What kind of animals are there? Dude, I could go on and on and on and on. There are thousands of uses for drones. You just got to be creative enough. That's going to do it for our show today. Thank you so much for listening. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. Also, if you found this useful or interesting or you want to send it to someone, you should do it. Share, 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 share. Leave us a review if you found the podcast helpful. Yep. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.